Questions 94 to 98. Gluten-induced celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder that destroys the architecture of the small intestine. Well, here it is, a cross-section of the small intestine from Gold Standard Gamsat Book 3, Bio 9.5. The small intestine is sometimes called the small bowel or the gut. This is where we absorb nutrients and some water. Enzymes like amylase, trypsin, chymotrypsin are secreted into the lumen of the small bowel to chop up polymers into smaller subunits like monomers. For example, amylase hydrolyzes carbohydrates into subunits like glucose and fructose, while trypsin and chymotrypsin, which figure heavily in the next unit regarding the digestion of peptides, help to break down or hydrolyze proteins into amino acids or dipeptides or tripeptides, which we can absorb. The remarkable thing about the small bowel are all the ways in which we can see it increases surface area for absorption. You can see these intestinal folds on a gross level in cross-section. And then when you look inside of that little blue box, we can look more closely and see these finger-like projections called intestinal villi, which are attacked by the immune system in celiac disease. And Acer says that damage leads to atrophy of the villi. So atrophy is wasting or degeneration. Now just imagine losing all this surface area. Of course, that means less of an ability to absorb water, which will result in diarrhea, and less of an ability to absorb nutrients, which can result in malnutrition. Again, let's look in the small square for an even closer look. Now we truly move to the microscopic level, and we can see finger-like projections emanating from the cells themselves, again with the benefit of increasing surface area for absorption. And it's not the first time that we're having this conversation. Do you remember question 46 in the pink booklet? We discussed the importance of increased surface area with respect to heat exchange occurring in the nasal passages. And here the same concept returns, but in the context of the small intestines. Okay, so to the passage. The first thing that I would say is that I wouldn't be reading this passage line by line trying to understand all the details. I would only be trying to get a general idea as to what's going on. The reason is simple. I would have checked the questions first and I would notice that there's only one question <laughs> after this rather long passage and the other questions in this unit follow additional information which means that the other questions are mostly based on the additional information. So I definitely will not spend four or five minutes trying to understand the passage before answering just one question. So a quick survey of the passage allows me to see that gluten peptides leak across the bowel wall and induce an immune response. Of course, that immune response generates a domino effect with increased TTG and HLAs and helper T cells and atrophy of the villi, et cetera, et cetera. But this is the summary of celiac disease, according to the passage. So question 94, which of the following best explains? Okay, so circle best. The occurrence of CD. Answer choice A, raised levels of intra intracellular TTG. So a quick survey of the passage leads me to paragraph 4, which mentions TTG, apparently for the first time, in the context of epithelial cells being damaged and then releasing an enzyme. So now the presumption is that the enzyme is normally inside of these epithelial cells, but by breaking the cell in some way, the enzyme leaks out and then causes problems. So there's no evidence of the concentration within the cell ever having been raised, but rather it is the extracellular concentration of this enzyme that is increased because of the damaging of the cells. And even if answer choice A had said extracellular, 
I still would find answer choice B a better answer because A does not give the root cause of the problem. So now we get to answer choice B, intestinal permeability. So permeability refers to leakiness, to gluten peptides. Yes, exactly. This is the cause. The leakiness creates a cascade of events in the immune system until the body actually starts attacking itself. And this is the nature of autoimmune disease. And so answer choice C, an abnormally functioning immune system. Actually, the immune system is functioning just as designed, which is to attack foreign bodies. Gluten peptides should not be crossing the bowel. And if anything foreign is found in a part of your body where it shouldn't be, then our immune system kicks into gear. So we can say that the immune system is acting in a way that is counterproductive, but it's quite normal. So answer choice C is incorrect. Answer choice D, the inability of some people to digest gluten. Okay, so for this, I have to go back to the passage to see what it says about the digestion of gluten. And so in the second paragraph, it describes that unlike most proteins, gluten is not completely broken down to individual amino acids, and therefore certain gluten peptides in the small intestines can occur. In no way does it say that this is a condition of celiac disease. In other words, it appears that paragraph two is describing what is normal for most people. And so having gluten peptides in the small bowel is normal. The problem is the leaking. This is what causes the issue, and this is why answer choice B is correct. Now to questions 95 to 98. And here we have some multiple choice questions which you can find in just about any medical school's epidemiology exam. So you're getting to do these questions a little early. And unlike in medical school, you've been given the equations. Question 95. So specificity indicates the percentage of. So we have specificity and it's true negative in the numerator. And so I look, I look on the exam paper to get a definition of true negative and it says number of healthy people correctly diagnosed as healthy. And one of the answer choices is healthy people correctly diagnosed as healthy. <laughs> so that's a gift. 95, the answer is D. 96, of the following, two methods produce the most false negatives and false positives respectively. So respectively, of course, means in exactly that order. So first we will look at the most false negatives. And so you would first look here at the equation to see that false negative is related to sensitivity. We don't have that related to specificity. It's only related to sensitivity. And then it's just a matter of math. If you increase the number in the denominator, it means that this number is going to get smaller and smaller. So we can write this rule. Increase false negatives, decreases sensitivity. So now it's just a matter of looking at the table for the method with the lowest sensitivity, and you can see 10% for HLA DQ8. And now we use the same logic for false positives. It's only related to specificity. And if you increase the number in the denominator, the false positives, then you will decrease the specificity. So now we look in the table for the lowest specificity and we find it for zonulin at 30%. And so for 96, the answer is A. 97 compared to HLA DQ2 using DQ8 diagnoses a greater proportion of now, Acer already made us look at that 10% sensitivity for DQ8 in the previous question. And you can see that the sensitivity much lower than the 95% for DQ2. And we already established that low sensitivity is related to high false negatives. And now we just have to look at the definition. False negative is the number of sick people incorrectly diagnosed as healthy. So the number of sick people, that refers to people with celiac disease in this case. So we're looking at the number of people with celiac disease diagnosed as healthy, which means considered to not have the disease. Therefore, 97, the answer is D. 
And if you had any doubt about the specificity, notice that DQ8 has a higher specificity at 80% as compared to DQ2 at 70%. Higher specificity would mean a decrease in false positives. But the question was asking about a greater proportion, not a reduction. And that's why 97 is D. And moving on to 98. And this requires a little bit of confidence because all the answer choices are identical to 97. So now we compare zonulin with anti-TTG antibody. And we notice that anti-TTG has a decrease in sensitivity at 90% as opposed to zonulin at 100%. So we've seen this story already. A decrease in sensitivity means relative increase in false negatives. And from the information in the passage, a false negative is the number of sick people, so that means people with CD, incorrectly diagnosed as healthy. That means interpreted as not having the disease. And so yes, once again, the answer is D, 98D. And hopefully you're used to the trends already, so all hail opposites. For the basic math manipulations, you can go to GAMSAT Math Chapter 3, the immune response, bio 8.2, and the small intestines, bio 9.5.